What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're gonna take another look at the Breville, or Sage for our European friends, dual boiler. Now, I made a video about this machine about two years ago. It was the first home espresso machine I personally had, and I absolutely loved it and still love it to this day. I think it punches way above its belt at $1,500 US dollars, $1,600, somewhere around there, and in Australia, way cheaper than even that. I think that this is an absolutely fantastic machine for the home enthusiast that really wants to take their coffee to the next level. Of course, over the past couple of years, there have been a slew of new machines that have come in to the home market. And so the question is, is this machine still relevant? Does it still hold its position as a contender for the best home espresso machine at the given price point? And even more so, are the rumors true? Is this machine being discontinued? We're gonna hit all of that and more in today's video on the dual boiler. I want to go ahead and dissipate the rumors that this is being discontinued. There was on Reddit a, a an email screenshot that had been circulating, supposedly from a Breville employee saying that this was being discontinued. That is false. I have asked people that I know at Breville if this if there's any validity to this claim. They asked me to send them the Reddit post I did and they said that is a fake email or it is just not true. It's simply not true. Most prized possessions in their lineup, they love the dual boiler. They think it really helped elevate them in the coffee field and they are not looking to discontinue that anytime soon. On top of that, uh, one of the big criticisms I got in my original video is that these are a little difficult to work on because there aren't really, a lot of the parts inside are kind of proprietary that you have to get from Breville and they're not readily available. Whereas on other machines, they're off the shelf parts. Well, because of the EU's new law on the right to repair, all of these parts will soon be released anyway. This machine, is it still relevant? Does it still perform in a way in a class above its belt? Is it still worth the price point? I'll go ahead and tell you, in my opinion, Absolutely yes. Now, before we continue into this video, I do need to make a disclaimer. I currently am consulting on a secret project with Breville. I do not make any money from any sale of any equipment. This is a consulting type thing on an unreleased thing. It's I can be I, I can't be more specific than that. But all I can say is how Breville does does not affect what I'm doing. How this does does not affect what I'm doing. This was my first machine ever. That first video I posted on it was completely authentic, and I believe this one is as well. So with that out of the way, uh, I'm going to push forward, but I wanted to be honest up front at the beginning and not hide it somewhere at the end. So why am I impressed with this machine? It's very simple. First off, it's a dual boiler. So you have readily available steam power and brew power. So you have two boilers inside that are constantly giving you temperature in order to steam and pull espresso at the same time. On top of that, the group head is electronically saturated, giving it incredible thermal stability. It also has a quick heat up time of around 11 minutes or so. So you don't have to put it on, turn it on and wait for a really long time. It's actually already at temperature and I started it at the beginning. So it's already, the boiler is at 96 Celsius. It only took five or so minutes to do that. And now I'm just kind of waiting for that group head to be fully hot and heated. The portafilter being made of brass is gonna take a little while to heat up as well. But for the most part, we're already ready to go. Now some things that make this machine really admirable and what I think makes it punch above its weight class is that it has inside variable pre-infusion. Now Bre Breville actually has a patented technology that is using essentially a potentiometer to regulate the flow coming out for this pre-infusion. Now they do have it limited to the controls on the menu and just for that pre-infusion phase. A lot of people have found ways of doing what's called the Slayer modification, which I show in my first video linked previously, where you take the needle valve from the hot water spigot, you disable the hot water spigot, rerouting the water through the hot water so that you can have that needle to control the flow rate to the group head. Now, of course, that is a great way of controlling the flow rate. It's similar to how like the E61 machines have uh, variable uh, flow rates with a little needle inside of that mushroom cap. It's similar to a Slayer which has a needle valve in the group head. So essentially what you're doing is you're using the needle valve inside the hot water uh, hot water tap in order to control the flow to the group. This is an awesome modification that was found out by some users on the Home Barista web. I have all of the links on that previous video for everything you want. I call it the Breville Dual Boiler uh, Bible. You have any link that you possibly need on that previous video. So if you're interested, please check that out and shout outs to the OGs who figured all this out. Now there's another way and a more effective way of getting variable flow rate and that is doing the potentiometer or the dimmer modification, which 
which I've gone over in this video with the Bambino Plus. That is essentially just routing a dimmer that you can get at any home goods store for like $5. You route it into the pump itself so that you can control the voltage to the pump, which therein regulates the flow of water to the group head. This is essentially the technology that Breville has patented, is using that potentiometer. Today I'm using a fully stocked machine. It's not modded like the original video. What you can do on here is if you hold down both in both of the middle buttons, the up and down buttons simultaneously, a new menu pops up. It says PR04. This is giving me the pre-infusion time. And we can go up pre-infusion all the way to 90 seconds. Now, 90 seconds, why is it 90 seconds? That's because this has an Ulca pump in it. It can only have 90 second cycles. So the longest you can pull on this machine is a 90 second shot. This means that if we wanted to, we could control the pre-infusion, a lower flow rate for a full 90 second shot. So if you're someone who's into like spro overs or something along those lines, you can have out of a stock Breville, a button that gives you spro overs, which makes you essentially a filter coffee from an espresso machine. But then you can also hit menu and you can change the pump pressure percentage. So this is how you control the amount of water coming out essentially. So right now it's at 65% pump pressure. So that is what the water coming out of the pump is going to be at is 65% of the pump's capability. So if the original capability is 10, 10 milliliters a second, it's gonna go down to like six and a half. Now that's not exactly how it works, but that's going to give you a decent visual image. So you can go all the way down from 65 to 55. And then of course you can go all the way up to 99. I don't know who's going 99 out of hundred, but you could do it if you wanted to. So you have the capability of controlling what is going to be automated when you hit one of these two buttons. Now these two buttons are volumetric. They're going to let you control the amount of water expensed from the machine for each of these buttons. You will set it using the menu and you can allow as much water as you want out and then set it to whichever button. Now on here has, there's a one cup and a two cup, which kind of kind of signifies single shot and double shot, which is very traditional. Not really anybody does that. This is so if you had a single shot basket and you wanted this one to be programmed to single shot, you could program that to single, this one to double. And then you could just switch out the baskets or the dose, whatever you wanna do. You could have both of these set to like, this one you might have it set to where roughly 50 grams comes out in a 20 gram dose of coffee. This one has like 70 grams come out in a 20 gram basket dose. Or maybe you do sometimes 17 gram doses, sometimes 20, and you like a one to two ratio, you can set the volume of the water that will go through the puck to those different outputs. So it's not the same consistency as using gravimetrics, but it's an incredible way to have something automated for your daily cup. And with the pre-infusion, it will automatically be set for this. So if you have say 80 milliliters of water being exited and you have 15 seconds of pre-infusion, that's counted in the water that is programmed into one of these two buttons. So you have the complete capability of creating a profile for whatever coffee you want that matches something like a Slayer shot. You can do that by using this pre-infusion guide and then setting the volume for these two buttons. What I think is most exciting, arguably, is whenever you're pulling a shot, you can hold down the manual button or one of your two, uh, one of your two preset ones, and you can have it pre-infused for as long as you want. So let's say that we have a, a coffee in there that we've never tried. We don't know which one of these two presets will work, so we're not going to use it. Instead, what we like to do is we like to use pre-infusion until five grams of drops get in our cup. Then we like to let it go full pressure. So how do we do that? You just hold down the button manual, and as long as you're holding the button down, it will do the pre-infusion phase at whatever pump pressure you have set. So we hold this down, it's pre-infusing at whatever pump pressure you have set, whatever percentage, and then when you let go, it kicks to full pressure. So then the pump is working at full gear. You have the capability of profiling your coffee without having to rely on the presets, which gives you a ton of control. Now what you can also do, which I've done, is you can measure the flow rate of each percentage of pump pressure. That way you have a good idea of where it's at. So if you want to say, you want to fill the puck at the, uh, I don't know, seven milliliters a second or five milliliters a second, you can do that based off this pump pressure. Of course, that doesn't help those of us that like to have descending pressures on our pucks, but a lot of machines don't do that and definitely none in this price range. So what you can do is do some sort of this, these modifications if that's something you're wanting to do. Of course, the puck is going to erode, so naturally that pressure will be decreasing anyway, but that's 
something to keep in mind. And there is actually a robust community of Breville dual boiler users online, including people like Peter Russell, who actually is one of the godfathers of modifications on Home Barista. He's one who's put like a rotary pump in his and he's changed out different parts to brass and has just completely modded out his machine to something that's absolutely killer. But you also have people like Testing123, I'll link his YouTube down below. He used a modded dual boiler for all of his shots online, showing you how you can do different flow profiles using the Slayer modification. And it's quite an incredible thing he does with all of the different shots he pulls on there with all the parameters. If you're someone with a modded machine like this, you should take a look at his channel and learn some stuff from him. He now uses a decent espresso machine because he's gone a little further into nerdery and wants to control all the elements. But for the longest time, he was a devout dual boiler enthusiast, especially at that price point and what he was able to do with it. So I would recommend checking out his channel as well. There's a robust community online of people with these machines. They share how to fix common issues like leaky steam wands, which is just a simple O-ring replacement, or other small maintenance things that you might run into over time with your machine. For instance, one of the biggest things I read on there is to not descale this machine because it actually can cause it to mess up. So I highly recommend you read through some of these things that I have linked in that previous video if you have this machine or you're looking to get one. So when you have something like this that is so far above most other machines in this price category, again, I say most, I have other machines that I'll be looking at here in the near future. When you look at all these machines, this one is certainly still relevant and is shocking that it offered what it did when it was released around 10 years ago. And I actually personally know people who still have some of the original run machines that are still running today without major replacements, maybe an Olka pump here and there, but those things are pretty easy to change out and a lot of people can do it with some video guidance or guidance from this home community. One of the biggest things that people talk about online and praise this for is its capability of maintaining its temperature. And they talk about the saturated group, the uh, electronics up here that really allow it to maintain its heat. And so we're gonna put that to the test on video today. Now this is stuff I've done years past with my SCASE device in order to ensure that my claims were valid. But today we're gonna just do it live so you can kind of see with your own eyes what it's actually doing when we have it set at say 96 degrees. What I have in here is the Passato tool that measures both temperature as well as pressure at real time. So essentially there's a thermoprobe inside of the portafilter. Now one of the downsides of this is unlike the case, there's nothing inside the basket to replicate a puck. So there's a lot of empty space, a big cavity inside that water needs to fill. Now I have warm water sitting in it to sort of emulate a puck because that puck does take heat away. So this water will take some of the heat away from the machine and then it'll take a while to kind of stabilize. So keep that in mind as we're watching the real time temperature. I have this camera right here so you can actually watch it as it is going throughout the shot. I do have the case, but it's been acting up lately and temperatures have been going from like 90 to 105. I don't know, it's something with the probe I think. I've actually done a lot of comparisons between this and the case. And if you allow for warm water and a longer shot time, it will give you pretty good uh, measurements. Keep in mind that there is that cavity that needs to be filled with water. I did leave a little bit of hot water in there. So we're currently reading 89.2 from a previous one I did flushing. So I wanted there to be something to sort of emulate a puck uh, because there's nothing in there to do so. But anyway, you can watch the temperature right here. We're gonna go ahead and click and we'll just let it run. All right, so just making sure the valve is set so it hits its proper nine bar. We're at 95.7, 95.8, 95.7. I mean, just incredibly consistent, 95.8, 95.9. And then of course, at this point, the puck will begin to erode, which will allow a faster flow rate out of the puck itself or out of the espresso. So as it erodes, that temperature should slowly start to dip, just barely. There we go. So now we're at like not eight and a half bar, eight bar. We're at 95.4, 95.5, and it'll keep eroding. Let's go down to like six bar. We're at 50 seconds and we're at 95.9, 96. So I mean, that just barely oscillates. 
So what, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna keep the hot water in there, and that way we can deduce more properly how quickly it heats up. If initially we see a temp drop, obviously the water coming out is lower temperature than what is currently in the basket, which is currently at 94.8. So if I hit that and we see a temp drop, then it starts off a little cooler, maybe because the water that's already in the chamber. If we see it stay and then kind of raise, that means we have pretty good hot water that's coming out. And so that we'll be able to deduce, deduce a lot from that. But let's go ahead and we're gonna start the shot. The starting water is 94.5. And let me go ahead and close this valve up more so we hit nine bar. All right, so we start off at 94.4, and immediately there is a, it goes to nine, okay, there we go, it climbs, 95, 95, one, 95, two. I gotta make it hit nine bar, whoops. There we go. So we're sticking right around 95.5, and it's just living there. Absurd. Like that is so incredibly thermally stable, it's kind of mind boggling. This is, really really nice i mean look at this just a couple of tenths of a degree that's changing let's go ahead and open the valve so we see what happens as that puck erodes a faster flow rate out it actually stays pretty consistent in fact it raises a bit when it goes when it goes faster let's go really fast we're at 96 yeah it, it, so it does just stay consistent it doesn't really raise or lower. It stays within that 0.5 degree, or really plus or minus 0.25 degree range. And that was a 66 second shot and it never left 95.5 to 96.1. Like that is, I mean, you saw it, you saw it for yourself. Uh, and that's why I wanted to do that. So you're not just relying on my word. You can actually see what is going on during these shots. Now that was that was with typical warm up time. And then um, I did do some test shots with it. So you know, take that for what it is, but I can tell you after you purge, uh, once you turn the machine on and you purge out maybe a little bit of water just to, you know, freshen that machine up and to get that portafilter nice and hot, it's like this every time, boom, 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 boom. We can do one more just real quick, just to show what it's like to do back to back to back shots. We click one more. Let me close the valve again, I keep forgetting to do that. There we go, nine bar. So in this one, it's up a little higher. We didn't really give it much of a break. I don't know who can pull shots that fast back to back, but it is starting to come back down. 96.5, 96.6, 96.8. Uh-oh, I may have it closed up. There we go. There we go. 97.1, 97.2. So when you go back to back to back, just like with a lot of machines, it does heat up. But if you give it like a minute in between, it is gonna hit that 96 that we saw earlier, 95, 5, 96 each time. Now, I didn't dump any of the water out of here, so this was just burning hot, and there was nothing for it to slowly catch up to, so it was able to just build off the past temperature. So we'll do just one more, I said just one more second ago, we'll do one more here, because now I have it set to the proper nine bar, so we're not gonna be messing around. So after you do another one, after 10 seconds that we maybe waited there, yeah, it stays kind of, it's, it sits a little hotter after that. So it might be good to kind of, you know, clear out a little bit of water if you're really fast at it. But if you're pulling a shot, then prepping another shot and pulling a shot, it cools back down to what you need it to be at. But even this, it doesn't go over really 97. And it's starting to come down back to 96. Just incredibly consistent. Now let's get this camera out of here. I'm so sorry about that. It's okay, Ugo, I forgive you. I forgive you. Now, of course, we need to pull a shot and steam some milk so you can kind of see how that goes. Of course, I've done this in that previous video, but if you're watching this for the first time, or this is your introduction to me introducing this machine, then let's go ahead, we're gonna pull some espresso. I'm just gonna pick a kind of a random grind size, and I'm gonna use the manual pre-infusion to kind of control the shot. And that way you can save more shots, or you can kind of just, if it's a really fine grind, you can sit and pre-infuse for a really long time until you see the drops come out. So, we're just gonna play around with it, and then I'll steam some milk. Oh yeah. What happened to that Brazil coffee? I took it out and put it here and you moved it. You move everything. It's always you, Hugo. You crazy person. Oh. I knew you took it, Hugo. Where's my marine cup? There it is. All right, so I've got my coffee loaded up and now what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to hold down the manual button and I'm gonna wait until I have, you know, a few grams of coffee in my cup and then I will steam the milk. So I'm doing a really low pre-infusion. I have the pump set to 
so as low as the machine will let me. And I see those drops just forming slowly on the bottom of the basket. There's a couple of drops coming, a couple more drops. We're at about a bar of pressure, and then I let go. There we go. Really nice. Very good. Now I could go ahead and start steaming, which I probably will do. So the steam on this, it's it's not super powerful, but it is incredibly easy to steam with, especially if you use the halfway and a quarter in my OG video. You know who you are, the people that have watched it, come on. So I'm just gonna steam, nice slow kisses. You know, about 10 seconds, 12 seconds of kissing. No making out, it's gross. We just kiss it. That espresso looks really nice. We stretch the temp of our hand and then went two out to the touch down there. That's about right. No corn dogs here. We don't want corn dogs there. And we clear out the steam wand for any milk that was sucked back up. And then here we go. We're gonna pour a little lart. Wee! 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 There we go. A little bit of lart. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It's slower than like commercial machines or something like the Sanrim OU or even the Vectus, which has a much higher steam pressure in the boiler itself. But it does come out really, in a way that honestly is really helpful to kind of beginners with steaming. It's very hard to kind of mess up. In fact, when I competed in latte art, I practiced mainly on this machine right here. I used this in a Sete 270 and I would just back to back to back to back to back make shots and steam milk. And this bad boy handled it with grace. Now listen. I know what you want. You want the texture test. <laughs> Done. No spilskies. Delicious. We're gonna take a little slurp. This does get really hot, like really, really, really hot. Definitely not as hot as an E61 gets, but it does get quite hot. Like I can keep my hand here, but it's like uncomfortable. I'm in pain. Why am I doing this to myself? Mm. Oh. Make Sprovers, make Slayer style shots, make whatever you're wanting using this menu right here. Good steam wand and a, a solid build. Now with the right to repair, you'll be able to switch out the parts. Easy peasy, no worries there. And a pretty, pretty solid price point for something with all of this packed into it. Is this still relevant in 2023? I say, yes, it absolutely is. I think this is there with that new Ranchilio that costs 1,700 with, uh, um, with like the Scott so Steel Duo with uh, all the E61s, this has better thermal stability than any of the ones I have tested, and I've tested a lot of them. So if you're looking for a thermal stability, you're looking for consistent shots, you're looking for um, a good steam wand, and something that's not necessarily offensive, but also not the most aesthetically pleasing thing in the world, thank you for watching today. If you enjoyed what you watched, please hit the like and the subscribe. It really helps the channel, helps the content, and um, I appreciate you all. Brew something tasty today, and cheers. <laughs>